sit. Always walk her up to the mat, have her sit. With your right hand, pat her chest and say, go to your mat. And then when she's there, say down. And you could lure her down with a little bit of reward here if you want. Good. And I practice this with her every day for a couple minutes a day. Good. And it's a way to practice a down stay. Doing it on the mat is more comfortable, comfortable for her as well as it's a faster way to teach her good, a down stay because she associates that one behavior going, staying in a down stay no matter where I walk with this mat. So the more you do it on whatever you good designate as her mat, it could be just a bath mat with a rubberized bottom just because you're gonna be doing it in your house as well. And if you have tile or linoleum, you want something that's rubberized or else it scrunches up. That's why you can't use a towel or something like that. Um, she'll go there and she'll just know that she's just gonna wait there. Good, she's gonna stay there until she's released. And so every day I just practice having her go into a down and practicing this down stay. Walking around both ways. And even if you just do this, you will be way ahead of the game. It's a basic down stay where she doesn't pop up even when you're walking behind her. And then when you reward, you always reward from the front and don't go like this because you'll, you'll um, lure her to pop up, but just kind of from in front, kind of swing in like this on her level, put the reward good right on the mat in front of her like that. Make sure she waits until you actually place it there and withdraw. She's not allowed to touch your hand or grab it out of your hand. So this is part of the, the uh, exercise right here. Good, where she waited. See how she waits? So I place it there. I even pause for a second or two. She waits. I withdraw. She takes it. I say good. So just try to do this even for three minutes a day is really good to do. And if she pops up before you release her, you just say no and you step on the leash and she'll go back down and then you continue. If she pops up a couple times, you just keep doing that. And then when she has a success and she stays there, you reward her. Um, when she, when it's time to release her, this is the only way that she gets off the mat. You step back next to her, pat your leg and say, okay, like this, walk her off the mat, have her sit, just like that. And then out of a sit stay, you release her, pat her chest and say, go, and she's free. Always pick up this mat because she's gonna wanna hang out on it like it's a doggy bed, but this is not for hanging out on. The doggy bed is a separate place where she has free time. Don't do any training on a doggy bed. It'll confuse her because, of course, sometimes she's gonna think, oh, I can relax here. Other times uh, she's gonna think, oh, now I'm supposed to focus. It's gonna make it a lot harder for, for her. So it's much easier if you just have one uh, one mat like this that's designated as the work mat and only do that one thing on this mat she'll learn a much deeper downstay if you do it that way and then keep the other places like the doggy bed just as the free time place that she can come and go as she pleases and she can sleep and whatever it's it's uh, better for her and her training to do it that way okay we're gonna walk her up to this person. We're gonna have her sit. And we are gonna step over and give this person a little treat. She used to get really excited when she would greet somebody, but we do this exercise every day with her. She, we have her in a sit stay. We step over, give the person a treat. Then we send her over, go say hi. And the treat's down on ground level and the petting's down on ground level. Come, also you have your recall that you can call her back to you, good. And that is what has sit stopped a lot of the jumping because she's gotten so used to just stay on all fours because all the good stuff's down on that level anyway. There's no reason to jump. If she does jump, go say hi. If she does jump, you're petting her. Don't correct, don't do this, don't say leave it or whatever the correction word would be, it wouldn't matter. It's just a noise you make to her. It's just a noise you make with your, your voice. Um, if she starts to jump, no. You show her that that behavior makes everything stop. So it's the opposite of how we were all taught when we were kids. You don't wait for the dog to do something inappropriate and then correct. 
because if you do that, you'll perpetuate the behavior. So we're starting off the right way. She's on the ground and she's getting petted, she's getting the treat, but if she jumps, nope. In her mind, she'll see exactly what the truth is, which is that when she does the inappropriate response, the hands go away. That's why you have to exaggerate no, and the hands go away, they're after your hands. So if she does that thing and immediately you move away from her and see I even took a step back. So much of this is just about body language. She'll really try very hard not to do that because she wants to be petted. All the jumping is just automatic stuff that she learned a long time ago because people corrected her instead and she never and she never got over it. It got actually worse. So you see how good she is now. Come. Just keep doing that. Good. And one more time. I'm gonna have her sit. By the way, you notice how I'm always stepping into her. I always turn left. She's on your left. And I always turn left. Go say hi. And even when I'm doing this type of exercise where I call her to come to me, come. I'll even throw in, good. That's a recall, of course. A little left turn. When you're turning left, the dog stays next to you, sit, draws the dog back next to you. It's also a very dominant move. If you're always doing like, okay, and stepping into her, and wherever you go, you're going left like that, into her, she's gonna think that you're the boss. And it's a, it's a very safe, non-threatening way to do it with her, with any dog, but it makes her feel like you're dominating her in a safe way and it's, it keeps the leash loose, obviously, because when you turn into her, it keeps her from pulling. If you're gonna go right, you're gonna end up doing this kind of stuff a lot, and it's all gonna fall apart because you're gonna have a tight leash. Whenever you pull on a dog, they, they're gonna go the other way. So that's why we always go left. If I'm gonna go right, okay. I'm gonna go, go left to go right. See how that works? bit about how to handle her when you're walking her left hand leash the right hands free to take to grab the reward when you call her to come to you if she's pulling see she pull that way see what I did I I didn't let her pull me I just kind of let her go to the end of the leash and I did a little tap and she stopped and you can always say come and she'll come back your way, and that certainly stops the pulling. And if you call her to come to you and practice every day like we practice here, you'll see she just pulls less and less because she kind of stays like around here instead of way out there pulling you around. And because she's so used to you calling her back to you and she's always coming back and coming back and coming back, it sort of makes the dog spend more time closer to you over time. Uh, but really the tight leash is your biggest enemy because the tight leash, plus staring at another dog could create aggression on the street. So you never want to have that because the tight leash causes overstimulation and anxiety in the dog. And if you have anxiety and you see another dog and you go like this, well, they're going to feel that through the leash as well. So you want to stay calm. You want to keep the leash loose. If she pulls you, you're either going to tap, tap like that, tap like that. See how she stopped again or come, call her back to you. Good, and that, that stops the pulling as well because she's here now. So just do that over and over again and you'll have what we have here. And remember, at all cost, keep the leash loose. It's getting pretty easy now, so all you have to do is keep doing what we're, what we're doing. She's familiar with this handling, so you just have to handle her the way we are here and you'll get the same result. Okay, let's go this way. Every time that we cross the street, I have her sit at the curb. I take a little treat, and as I walk around her, I'll just feed her that treat just to keep her in the sit-stay. And I always do both, both directions because I want her to be really good and really used, really used to me. Look, one more, good girl. Really used to me, that's okay, sweetie. Um, 
walking around her. And this is a, this sits day at a curb before you cross the street. This is one of the reasons why she doesn't pull so much anymore on the street because every time you cross the street, it's structure, focus, she gotta sit and wait until I come back next to her after I do that little sit stay. I say, okay, we walk across the street. She walks calmly across the street, just follow me. See how she's not pulling me? It's because of I'm constantly checking in with her with a sit stay or calling her to come. On the other side, sit and go. And then she's free. So lots of free time other than calling her to come to you, like you've seen in the other clips, um, while you're walking her, always keeping the leash loose. And then when you cross the street, sit stays. The calm zone is crossing the street, no pulling. On the other side, sit and go. She's free again, like this. Okay, let's go this way. Just hanging out on the street. Oh, here comes the dog. But she's interested in something else. Come. Notice how I never repeat the command. She's she's very um, she's very distracted by something else. But we have a dog right there. We have a dog walking up to us and she cares more about the camera person or whatever's behind him. Come. I'm gonna call her back to me. Good girl. But as you can see on the street, when she's approached by other dogs, we're not having an issue because every day we bring her out here. Come. I call her away from other dogs. Look over here, silly. She's not hungry anymore, but still, so she's not hungry, I'm still going to, she might have to pee. I'm just gonna do it without rewards a couple times just to show you. Worst case scenario, let's say you go out and you run out of treats or you get surprised. Come, you're still gonna do it. She's still gonna come around, good. And I'm turning different ways because I want to stay within the camera shot, but let's just back up, straight back. Come even without the treats. Good girl, she still comes your way. Just grab the leash and get going, or go, you know, step into her. Go this way, cross the street or something. So you see how practicing this way makes her much less reactive with other dogs when she sees them on the street. And she doesn't know these dogs either. She doesn't know them. So this is just how she's been with us after all the practicing on the street with dogs. Okay. She hasn't seen the dog approaching. I know that we have a, a little dog approaching from behind us. And when you're on a walk out in public, when she sees the dog, see she sees the dog, come, call her. I'm gonna stay here so you can see me from the camera. Good, call her away from that little dog. And just stay in the shade right there on the sidewalk, okay? And let's get a couple more recalls out of this. She's more interested in the person holding the camera than the little dog. So see the little dog's getting kind of close to us. And you see how she's pretty non-reactive to the little dog. Come! But don't let her just stand there and stare because two things that cause leash aggression are the tight leash, any kind of tension on the leash and restraining, and staring, so if she's staring, first of all, you can totally control the tight leash. If she pulls, come, call her back to you. Instant uh, loose leash when you call her back to you, of course. And staring, it's easy to solve the staring problem because you use your recall, come. She stops staring, comes back your way, turns her back on that distraction, that dog, and comes your way. So this is what we've been practicing here with all types of different dogs, big dogs, little dogs. And the key is that when you're out in public with her, you are actually, this is your opportunity to train because she obviously has it. She can do it here. She can do it with multiple dogs in different situations. Um, but when you have her out on a walk, you have to be looking for the distraction, the dog, and hopefully you're gonna see that, that dog before she does. You usually will because you're so much higher than she is. I always see the dog before she does. And then when she sees the dog, look, that dog's barking. Come, that's good. Call her away, good. And you see she didn't even react to the little dog barking. So those are the rules. Always come, call her away. 
from that dog, good. See the way I'm doing it? The leash is on my left wrist. It's very easy to do this, even if you let go of it. You can't lose a dog because it's around your wrist. And your right hand is for the, the target. And when you see a dog coming, just grab a treat. Come, call her back to you. See how I'm backing away? And any way I go, good. Any way I go, she's gonna follow me because I back away and she'll come to this target. Now, at first, you wanna use rewards like I am. And this is just a simple dog lamb treat. But you could use all types of things. Really high value, value rewards are good to use, like chicken breast or little pieces of cheese or things like that. Uh, the higher the value of the reward, the more likely or the more enthusiastically she's going to want to turn away from that dog if you're having any problems at your place and come back to you because food is like money to dogs and a piece of chicken breast is like a hundred dollar bill and some uh, little stale uh, dog biscuit is a one dollar bill so always use a high value reward in this situation and she's always going to want to come to you and then after you practice for a while notice i'm calling to this close target every time but after you practice for a while come I'm gonna go back this way again. Good girl! You can do it with nothing. In an emergency, even now, she doesn't know it's empty. So in an emergency where you get snuck up on by another dog, you're totally surprised, just pretend like you have it. Come! Call her back to you. Your left hand grabs that leash or collar. Good girl! You love her up. And you see how it works with no food? So. In order for you to have what I have, you need to practice with rewards at first, high value rewards, especially calling away from dogs. And later on, you won't need them so much because she won't even, she'll be like this, first of all. You won't have to do much, but just keep walking. But for a while, you need to keep calling her to come to you. But um, you can also do it with nothing in there because in an emergency, maybe you, you didn't have time to reach in there and grab a reward. So just uh, keep practicing what we're showing you here.